Yep. I think all, all of our coaches take it very seriously. I think they did a great job. A lot of support from the people over at the Coliseum to allow us to use that space. So we were able to fit everyone in, and um, uh, they were able to watch practice. So uh, I was uh, walking down to my apartment last night in downtown and saw coaches out and joined the Haymarket and stuff like that. So I think it's really good when we can show off Lincoln, show off our staff, show off our facilities, and most importantly, show off our and most importantly, show off our players. So really, really good day. What is the importance of your model having a hundred or so former players on hand? Yeah, yeah. I'd love that that number to be about seven, eight hundred, nine hundred. You know, I'd like that number to continue to grow. And we have a lot of for, former players that come pretty continuously all throughout. But um, you know, the Husker, you know, Athletic Fund, uh, they they do a great job just inviting guys to come back. I mean, this is their program, and so you know, we're open, we're open anytime to high school coaches, and we're open anytime to former players. And uh, we, you know, we wanted our guys to understand that they stand on their shoulders and uh, just good fellowship. Good to see those guys. And, um, you know, when you, when you sit there and look at our team and the amount of guys on our team whose parents were Huskers, um, both as football players, you know, as uh, Jalen's mom, Dahlia, is a track athlete. A couple of our guys, Corbett Demers' mom, volleyball player, and then just, and then just Husker students. Um, I think just keeping it very family is really important. In today and how how do you evaluate the practice? Yeah, today was not a scrimmage. Um, you know, with, with an e earlier Easter and a later start for us. Um, you know, the first Saturday. This is our first Saturday. Last Saturday was Easter Saturday, so we gave the guys the day off. That's why we went on Monday. So you know, you're only allowed by NCA rules three days of um, scrimmage, which is over 75 percent tackling, I think. So um, that'll be next Saturday, the following Saturday, and then the Saturday after that. And we really like what we've been doing. We really like the teamwork, you know, followed by the Spring League. And um, I think it's really raising the level of a lot of guys' play. So it looked like a really good practice. Um, you know, it's, it's always hard to tell when you have so many people there. You know, it's kind of like you're kind of spread out a little bit more. But um, I thought I, what I saw was a lot of guys making plays on the ball. Which, you know, I think Marcus did a really nice job talking to you guys the other day saying, you know, you look back to last year, you know, we have to just throw the ball better. And we can't be minus 17 in turnover ratio. You know, we ran the ball well. We stopped the run well. Um, we were pretty decent on third down in some areas. So uh, really true focus on throwing the football has been important. Everyone talks about the quarterback when that happens. But, you know, the guys getting open and catching the ball matter. And I saw a lot of plays made on the ball today, which uh, made me excited. Um, so look, looking forward to watching the tape. Is it too early to tell if unforced errors are sort of dropping as you want them to in practices with the offense? And I know sometimes it's the defense making a great play or something. Yeah. But... Mm. You know, that, that's a great question. Uh, I think you have to have a high expectation level to not have them. I think you're going to have them. Um, uh, you know, guys are mastering their craft. They're learning what to do. Especially, you know, the negative of having the spring league is that, you ha you know, you, sometimes you have a younger player trying to block an older player. You have a younger player counted on. The good thing is your younger players get better a lot faster because <laughs> everyone's kind of counting on them. So uh, yeah, we, we still have issues. You know, we still have. But I, what, I, what I see is an overall commitment to execution that's at a significantly higher level offensively than it probably was last year, um, probably at any point last year, to be quite honest. <clears throat> To how close are those to scrimmages in terms of, of how you coaches evaluate them? Oh, we coach the same way. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I, if we film it, I watch it. Like I, we watch one, one on one blocking to me is just as important as a scrimmage rep. Uh, you know, everyone thinks that great players do extraordinary things, but I think the thing that I've learned about great players is great players do like the ordinary things unbelievably well. You know, um, we would run an option route with Christian McCaffrey, and it wasn't that he would run some route every game that was new. He would run that option route so well that it was uncoverable. You know, Delaney Walker's here with Will Compton. I was talking to Delaney a little bit of football last night. He was talking about an option, a corner post read that he would run. That was his route. Like, he didn't have to change it every game. Man, he ran it really, really well. And so, to me, whether we're watching 7-on-7 seven seven or 1-on-1 one one or 9-on-7 or team run or team move the field or, you know, the spring league today was third downs, it's all an opportunity for guys to go and make plays. And... Um, the concept of like in the spring that like I need to be playing next to you, we, we need to have chemistry and all that, that's an absolute farce to me. 
Um, in fact, I should be such a good player that you can put anybody next to me and I make them better. That's what I'm looking for. If I'm a guard and I need to be next to Ben Scott, then I really don't know what I'm doing. If I'm a guard and I can play next to anybody, then I'm really a good player. If I'm a guard and people want to play next to me, that means I'm really, really a good player. And so what we're doing is, you know, we're allowing guys to really thrive and grow and in different situations. And you're playing quarterback, maybe one day you have the 1-0 line. It's a pretty good setup. Maybe the next day you have the 3rd line. Well, you know what? We'll see what kind of quarterback you really are. So I've enjoyed all of the different aspects of it. Anyone that stepped up from a leadership perspective that's really been pleasantly surprising to you in the spring league capacity? And if you can just talk a little bit more about the inspiration behind the whole idea. Yeah, just the idea was just, just, just you know, to play football. You know, I mean, so much, you know, I watch, I watch uh, you know, I, I watch a lot of practices. I go around the country. I see people, you know, we, we all grew up playing sports all the time you know like our, our kids are growing up playing stuff on the video games and ipads and there's nothing wrong with that that's just life right so to me um you know, we have to do drills and we have to do team periods you have to do all those things we have to script things but i want them to play um how do you move from a position of like being a little bit doubtful and afraid of making a mistake to being confident you play right you test your limits you find out you can do more than you actually can do so we just wanted to play um we just want to be competitive um in terms of anybody stepping up in terms of leadership, you know, I think we're, I think our leaders are pretty established. You know, the Isaac Giffords, Marquise Bufords, you know, Jamari Tide, Na like N Nash and Terrence got into a fight today almost because Nash wanted to go in. I mean, I love that about Nash. Um, you know, th there's so many guys. I mean, just kind of our, our our guys, our older veteran. I think they're doing a great job, and I think what they've they've done a great job of, of accepting accepting the young players and you know, orienting them to kind of how we do things. So no real surprises. Uh, I just think everyone's really moving along in a good direction. You said you, you wanted like, three scholarship quarterbacks at the end of spring. Do you want to be started? What kind of progress are you seeing in that regard? Just overall progress. Yeah, they're right on, they're right on track. Further ahead probably than I thought. Um, you know, there, there was a time, Steve, where I used to be like, hey, guys, don't worry about where you're on the depth chart. And I think I said this the other day, so forgive me. But don't worry about the depth chart. Just learn and grow. And fundamentally, that's what I believe. But if the players are obsessed with where they are, then I'm like, okay, well then, figure it out. <laughs> Go win, like, you know. And, and we, you know, sometimes live in a world now where everyone's like, well, why does this person get this? Why is it? Just worry about you. Be great at what you do. We've never kept a bad. We've never kept a great player on the bench. We've never have. Um, so uh, I think all three quarterbacks. What that's doing. Is one guy sees you know one guy sees a guy flip the protection, and he says, "Oh, I'm going to flip the protection." It's just players learn from players way more than they learn from coaches, and um, you know if you're if you're one of the freshmen and you see the other freshman quarterback change the protection or adjust the route, then you're going to do it, right? And I think Glenn's doing a great job of fostering that, and Sat's doing a great job of allowing it, and you see them. You know, taking things. Not, not everything is perfect, but we're definitely, definitely, definitely moving in a really accelerated pace. I'll apologize for the loaded question, but <laughs> being around him and you know, looking from afar, what makes Bill Belichick Bill Belichick? Uh, he is he he is so smart. Has seen so much that he can make the complex so simple that it humbles you and embarrasses you. I was embarrassed yesterday listening to him, how smart he is, how simple it was. He went, which, what, what, he, how, we went, he, went, he went four and a half hours with, just with the coaching. Forget the clinic. Like, he came in and met with our coaching staff. And um, well, three and a half hours in, I was like, Coach, would you like a water, a cup of coffee? Would you like to use the restroom? Because I desperately had to use the restroom, you know? And he's like, I'm fine, Matt. I was like, yes, sir. Um, and just sitting there and just talking, right? And just his recall from things 15 years ago. And, you know, the only reason why we don't get through more information is because he's having to slow down to make sure you understand what he's saying. I mean, so you have this man who's a savant, right? Who's been a defensive coordinator. He's been a special teams coordinator. He's coached, you know, he could, he could be an offensive coordinator. He's been a head coach twice. He's been um, a GM person. I mean, he's... And he's talking about football in a way that just like, I mean, illuminates things and makes things so simple that you're like, oh my goodness. 
And so um, it was an unbelievable experience to spend that amount of time with him. Just you know, and I had a chance to coach against him at practice. So it's a, that affected a lot of what I did when I was at, you know in Carolina and he was in New England. But having that time yesterday, it, you know, maybe if he was coaching right now, he wouldn't have been so open with us. You know, maybe he's like, I don't want to get this out there. But um, he did it, and he's a great friend and a really loyal man. You know, like, you know, I got fired. He and Andy Reid were the first, were two of the first people that called me. Um, I was thinking about taking this job. He he called me and was like, you know, hey, I, I really think Nebraska is a great place. Um, I got the job. He sent me a bottle of Dom Perignon, you know, and said, hey, congratulations. I asked him to come speak at the clinic. He says yes. His son takes a defensive coordinator job for Washington in our conference, you know, and Jed Fish has worked for him, great friends. He still comes. So just an unbelievable loyal guy. But the amount of football we learned yesterday as a staff, for anybody that was listening, um, you know, sometimes you get around someone like that and you try to impress them, like tell them what you do. I looked at people, anytime one of our guys on our staff started, I was looked at them like, well, he doesn't care. He doesn't care what you do, what we do. He's teaching us. Let's just be really honest and open and listen. That's the same approach I've tried to take with Coach Solich, Coach Osborne, Coach Darlington. Just listen, learn, take what you can, build off of it. How would you, how would you size up uh, what, what you've seen out of the running back so far? Yeah, you know, we're limited at the running back position just with um, injury. You know, Ramir, Ramir's practicing just, you know, kind of in a limited capacity. He's full go. Like, it's just me, right? Like, year six, shoulder injury. I want Ramir ready to go. Um, Gabe is doing some indie. You know, Quentin Ives has a hamstring, so he's been out for a couple days. Um, I think Emmett's doing a great job. Um, you know, we, we, what we want from Emmett is for Emmett to take that jump from, hey, I played last year and made some explosive plays to, like, I do it down in and down out. Uh, Dante's a guy that's flashing with some big, powerful physical runs. Um, but, you know, just, you know, kind of the conditioning of being the guy play in and play out, like we're just working on that with him and blitz pick up and all those things. But I'm really pleased with Dante and where he's at and where he's um, where he's heading. You know, uh, Maurice Mazuka is a guy that earned the respect of the team last year on the scout team. And we almost made him the short yardage back at one point, uh, maybe maybe should have. And uh, Reese is out there, and he's doing a fantastic job. I had one of our former players kind of walk down. He's like, who's 33, man? He's really a good player. And I'm like, I know, I know. Um, and that's one of the benefits of the spring league is these guys are getting a ton and ton and ton of reps. Um, so I've been, I've been really pleased uh, with that group, and I've been really pleased with kind of how they're doing things. And then, you know, we have – uh, you know, uh, Kinchin's a, a, a big physical power back, you know, so um, we have a lot of guys who haven't played a lot that are doing some good things. I'm just anxious to see sort of, you know, how that whole room unfolds in the end. Coach, from former players to Belichick, you've had so many people see your program over the last few days. Just kind of what you hope they kind of come away with walking out of these doors and out of these buildings. Yeah, and I, you know, very, you know, when I say this with the greatest of respect, it, it's our program. You know, it's uh, it's it's uh, it's all those alums' program. It's the high school coaches here in the state's program. It's the players' program. It's it's the university's program. It's the state's program. It's alumni everywhere. It's their program, and so. Um, I'm just in, entrusted it for a short amount of time. I'm trying to do the best job that I can. And I know that, you know what, um, someone will be here after me. And I want them to say, you know what, Matt left it in a good place. And so what I said to the coaches at the end of my session today was, I hope when they come to our clinic and when they see that we designed a logo just for the clinic or they walk and they see the signage or they taste the quality of the food or they listen to the quality of the presentations, I hope like all these little things they say, Wow, everything everything in this program is really intentional, and everything's done at a really high level. And like Susan Ells is over there, like she 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 like like uh, Anthony Crispino, Keith Williams, former player who we elevated this year, Kiera Mayo, Jarrett with Sean. Um, to, if you don't think that they walked that those paths fifty times, if you don't think Cole and Martin were here this morning at five a.m. making sure that all the bulbs work, like it just I want people to understand how intentional we try to do everything because. If we're intentional about a clinic, if we're intentional about the spring league, if we fly in Big Ten refs just for a practice, then we're probably that intentional with the way we handle our young people's academics, their life skills, their community service, their careers. And that tells those high school coaches, hey, I can send my student athletes here. Um, 
I love coaches. So like, you know, sometimes, sometimes some of the high school coaches aren't used to seeing the head coach at the social. Um, sometimes they're not used to seeing the head coach walking around. You know, why, why wouldn't I? You know, I mean, I, I, lo- I love people. I love coaching. I love being around high school coaches. Guys, we had high school coaches from Hawaii here. We had high school coaches from Maryland here, from Texas, from California, from Wyoming, from the Dakota. I mean, we had people from all over, from Chicago. Um, you know, I don't know what the clinic was the year before we got here. It was about 300 and some last year. 800 to this year and we're going to be back up in the 12 and 1500s if we put together a good product but the product is representative of the way that we do things and so that hopefully tells people if i send my players to play at the university of nebraska no stone's going to be left unturned and i don't know about you guys that have kids isn't that what you want for your kids you don't want i mean our kids have to go figure things out on their own but we want like we want there to be a plan and and so we're not perfect but um we're certainly trying to be, and uh, that's that's the message at the clinic. You know, I show up at the clinic, and there's Coach Osborne. He's got a sport coat on this morning, and he's, you know, it's just all those things matter. They say that hey, this is important, and um, you know, you know, for Will Compton and the, and the bus, and you know, and Delaney and those guys, for them to come back and show off our facilities, it shows that it's important. So everything's intentional. Everything's done on purpose, and um, that's the message I want out there. As much as you love to get recruits here for game days. Just generally speaking, how much do you love to see them watch you practice, how you practice, and, and how you operate? It? This will be controversial, <laughs> but I actually prefer them at practice way, way, way more because I think we have excellent coaches. And I think, you know, we practice the way Coach Osborne and them practice, the way Coach, which, you know, three fields, two fields, three fields. You know, Coach Osborne had four stations, you know. And so I'm walking up to players with all this talent, and I'm saying, you guys probably think I'm trying to, like, get a marketing deal. I'm just actually really thirsty. <laughs> I'll say, hey, just imagine with your talent. I said to one of the big time recruiter, I said, just imagine with your talent, if you came to a place that had an unbelievable weight room, unbelievable recovery area, unbelievable staff, unbelievable meeting rooms, best facilities in the country, and where no one stands around in practice, where everybody has a chance to master their craft. And I said to him, I said, have you ever seen anybody else practice like this? He said, no, but, well, actually, coach, I did see one. I said, who? And I know the answer. He's like, Georgia. You know, Coach Saban at Alabama, then the Georgia guys, they all have the multiple stations and the reps and all those things. And I think it's working out pretty well for them. <laughs> and so, um, so yeah, I think that those, you know, that, that's, I'm proud of those things. I'm just trying to show those things off, you know, to everybody. You talked about how important receivers are to that pass game and the emphasis this spring. What have you seen out of some of the new guys in that receiver room and the returners? I think they're competing. I think that they're um, – they're, because of the spring league, because they're being counted on, they're limiting their, their MA. You know, usually young receivers have a hard time learning this many plays, and they are working at it. And they are, you know, you know, your whole team's counting on you, and it's third and five, and you're supposed to run an in cut, and you run an out. It's practice. Sometimes it's like, oh, get him out of here. But now you got Isaac Gifford on defense, but on offense you have some of those guys getting on him, and then you have three quarterbacks, and, and, and let me say this, Luke and Jack are doing a great job, so you have five quarterbacks who know exactly what to do. There's a little bit more on us. You see guys studying a little bit more and more prepared. Um, but yeah, I've, I've really liked the group. You know, I'm, you can tell I'm, I'm not singling anybody out because I like the entire group. I like the way they're all competing. And um, um, a couple guys, you know, Jalen Lloyd, uh, we'll signal him out because you know, he for a guy. I love the fact he runs track and he comes back and competes in football, and um, um, you know makes plays down the field. He's he's a football player and he's a track athlete. He's not one or the other, and that's really really cool. So, um, but but the whole group, the whole group is pushing each other and getting way 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 better. Leonard Jelling and their two new rules, their roles, and how far have they come along to? Yeah, if I'm being honest, I think the whole thing, the whole thing with Marcus and Glenn is probably way has been overblown. Like you know, I get asked about it. Like we did this before. It's actually way more comfortable. You know what I mean? Than it was. You know, like uh, you know, Glenn's worked with me at two stops. Like I don't. My life, my, my life right now is so much easier than it ever has been at any stop I've been because. I have Susan running the entire operation, and she knows exactly what I want. I got Sean running most of the personnel stuff with some great people underneath him. But I've got Corey, who's been with me before, running the weight room. I don't have to go down and be like, are we, are we squatting or power cleaning today? Like, he, we, he knows the culture. I've got the best nutritionist in football. I've got the best sports science guy. I, it, 
on, on defense, Tony runs everything on defense, right? And I got three guys who played for me. I trust it with the highest level to coach their guys. I got Gus Felder in player development who did it for me in Carolina. I don't have to get super involved there. Um, Ed runs the special teams. Like it's the same drills we've been we're doing drills today. We've been doing for ten years. Um, and Glenn, I can walk in. I don't have to go in the quarterback room. You know, Glenn, he's coached my quarterbacks before. And so, um, you know, I've said to him, like, hey, are we still punch planning this? Or we, I, I can get questions answered so quickly. And then Sat coached my tight ends at Baylor. You know, he coached Ben Sims as a freshman who's, you know, now playing for the Green Bay Packers. I, I just am so happy with the staff and the way that we're doing things. And so um, – it's it's felt more like instead of settling into a new rule, it's felt more like hey, getting back to when we were really good, how we did things. If that makes sense, you know, when we were when we were uh, in the Sugar Bowl at Baylor, you know, which no one will really ever understand how hard that was to do where we started to what we did in three years. Probably be one of the most proudest things of you know my our career together. You know, Sat was coaching the tight ends. <laughs> um, uh, Glenn was coaching the quarterbacks. When we beat Penn State for the first time in 74 years and probably the most historic win in Temple history, Glenn was coaching the quarterbacks and Sat at the time was coaching the running backs, but you know not the tight ends. So I just feel so comfortable with those guys that it's allowing me to free me up to do things that I love to do, to do situational football, to do the whole team, to talk to players one-on-one. And so um, – on the inside, things are as good here as they've been. And so now that I've said that, I probably ruined it. <laughs> but, uh, but no, you know, on the inside, man, like I'm just really, really pleased with the staff, the players, and where everybody is. And the biggest thing is that you know, the, the gifts, the ties to Ben Hart's, to Ben Scott's, man, they are, they, are, they are comfortable with what we're doing so that I'm not having to explain why of everything, right? Like, they're explaining why. I mean, I got Phelan Sanford working in the weight room, you know? Like, guys, he should – I hope he ends up in the NFL, but, like, he's interning in there. Like, I, we have all these guys who've been through the process now for a year and all these different areas. They can coach the young guys because players coach players better than coaches coach players. Um, that's, that's, the, that's, that's the way you build culture. Anything else? Thanks, guys. Good to see everybody.